as um, Brian Rowland would combine. They're both the uh, VPs of business development. And they were a little worried about taking up to 20 minutes, but Judge Imahara was kind enough to uh, cut that period down to where they got two minutes each. Um, <laughs> no, we'll try to keep this on track. Um, we really just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, talk about some technological advances and things you might be seeing in the future um, in the realm of transportation, translation, and investigative services. So I am going to turn it over to these folks and uh, let them give you a little update on what to look for in the future. Thanks, Rodney. Uh, I guess I'll go first. I'm Brian Rowland with Combined Investigators, based right here in Atlanta. Um, 31 years in this area and across the southeast and now nationally uh, in 44 states. Uh, real quick, um, I'm going to cover three innovations in investigative uh, work. and. Um, I could talk for an hour on each one of these, um, but we have, I have like seven minutes, and you're right, I have seven minutes. So I'm going to move quickly. If you have questions, um, please see me in my, my booth out here. Um, and I'll also preface this that I am no legal expert on any, any of this information, and there's plenty of um, great attorneys in this room and a great firm that's putting this on. So um, um, technology is moving quickly in, in the investigative world. Um, and we've got to be careful when, with new technology with the legal implications of each one of these. Um, and I'll, always always refer back to your attorney um, to make sure that um, they're handled correctly and it's a product that um, will work for you. Um, the, first, the first topic, and, and most of you are familiar with this, is um, drones. Um, it's new, but it's not new. Um, it's new to the investigative world. Um, but I will tell you this, our position on drones as a company, uh, we don't use them. Um, um, simply because too many unknowns at this point on what the legalities are. Um, Georgia currently does not have uh, any statutes that address um, using a drone in investigative work. Um, there are practical applications for it even outside of investigations, land surveys, um, real estate, um, and things like that. Um, I was recently, in preparing for this, I recently discovered that Florida has a new statute, and I'll give you the number for it, um, 934.50, it prohibits the use of drones by public, uh, by private investigators. So those of you that do work in Florida, you might want to make note of that. Um, Georgia, again, Georgia has not addressed this, but general expectation is that the privacy laws will preclude most surveillance use. So, you know, Florida is, is on the front of this. Um, Florida did create an ex exception for most licensed professions, such as realtors and surveyors, but it specifically carved out and mentioned private investigation. Um, the next quick innovation um, that I think you guys would like to hear about is something that we call tag readers. And I don't know if anybody in this room has ever used tag reader technology. Um, it's growing every day. And let me, let me explain real quick what, what, what this technology is. It's where um, a private company takes cameras and places them on each side of a car and drives through parking lots of malls, of office complexes, of apartment buildings, and takes photographs of the car and the license plate. And it, it, it puts all those uh, pictures into a database that can be searched. Currently today, there's seven billion tags. Seven billion tags have been recorded. Um, this, when you search this database, it will reveal the city and location of this vehicle. Um, this technology is used to help, help locate claimants or individuals that you have had trouble finding. Um, a few quick facts about tag readers. Um, again, seven billion entries costs for a limited period. Let's say the last 30 days is ten dollars. Very inexpensive to, to search. Um, the cost for historical data is twenty-five dollars, and you can search back till 2009 when this technology started. So it's it's pretty interesting that these cars will ride through park lots all over the country, every city, and just take pictures of cars. Um, we've had great success in locating subjects for, um, 
for our adjusters and, and, and clients. Um, and a lot of times we can locate the place that they work outside of where they supposedly work. Um, and it's great for dip, lo locating difficult um, to find claimants. Um, we've used this several times, especially in vehicle damage claims where there was damage on a work vehicle um, and it was never, it was never, um, a claim was never made. Um, at a later date, they say that this vehicle was damaged. Um, we're able to go back and it was picked up on the tag reader and shows that there was no damage at the time they claimed the incident happened. So those are some applications. Um, the third area that I'm going to talk about finally is uh, something we call people mapping. This is kind of new, um, a part of social media investigations. Um, it's also called, called link analysis. Um, people map mapping it is an in-depth dive into social media. Um, from this, we were able to collect data and conduct a link analysis of people and or entities. The methods um, include using public information and other forms of recorded databases to tie businesses and people um, together with information provided by the client. In a, in a social media information world, um, there's a lot of people that are connected um, to others that we don't know about. Now we all know we can see friends of friends um, on Facebook, Instagram, that sort of thing. Who's following who? But when we dive deeper, especially when we get to the claims world, we see that people are connected within a claim. And it gets really interesting as you dig deeper. We recently had a case of an Uber driver that was claiming several hit and run accidents. He was continuously being hit and there was no one to, to, to vouch for that. But through this link analysis and mapping, we, were, we found out later down the road that these individuals that were hitting him were actually connected, him on, connected to him on several social media platforms. So therefore the fraud comes in. Um, so that's an interesting way um, to do that. Uh, we, it provides what this map, people mapping does, it provides a matrix. You have your subject and you have the, the it's actually a visual of the web. I wish I had a slide to put up today to show you how these people are connected. And that way we can dig deeper into each individual um, and find out the connection there as well. Um, so those are three quick innovations or newer things in the investigative world. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to talk to me more about it. Um, I'll back. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Uriah Ioni. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today and part of this great event. Um, I'm the VP of Business Development for Global Trans Services. We are a local Georgia-based company. We're headquartered right here in Denver, Georgia. <clears throat> we provide national transportation, um, not emergency. Uh, everything from an air ambulance all the way down to your basic sedan. Someone needing a ride to pick up meds or go to a PT visit. And on the language services side, we provide um, uh, on-site translation, uh, public conference calls, depositions, anytime there's a language barrier with uh, rare languages, we can help in that um, arena. Uh, real quick, everybody here have cell phones? We have cell phones? Smartphones? We've got you some awesome technology packed in here that we're taking advantage of as a company. Now, there's probably a few flip phone users. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. <laughs> Eventually, that phone's going to die, and you'll need to upgrade with the rest of it, catch up with the rest of us. So, um, you've probably heard of some companies like Google or Waze. Or you may even have used some of that technology to, to find this wonderful building, right? Um, what we realized back in 2015 is that as a transportation company, we needed to take advantage of that same technology. Um, that they use uh, GPS tracking, um, there's location services that are enabled on your phone, and also with geofencing, where you can create a virtual fence around a facility and it will send automatic push notifications when you show up. You've probably seen some stuff in the news about people tracking you. Or what we did is we knew that we needed an app to interface with um, our independent contractors and our translators. Before, we never could see uh, when that driver showed up or you know, the case manager would call us and say, hey, your driver's not here, how far away is he? Well, this allows us to interface in real time with our drivers and our translators. Um, you know, just to give you a quick timeline, back in 2015, we saw this as a need, and it took us about a year and a half to 
to get the software, work with the company to develop an app. So we now have an app called GTS, Global Trans Services, that we interact that our um, independent contractors and our uh, interpreters use. So full transparency, we launched it back in the end of 2017 and we're about 60% network capacity. Our goal is to get that up to 90. Um, anytime you have any technology, there's always um, uh, time to get that out and implemented with our independent contractors. So we also built some efficiencies in that to where we can, um, when somebody shows up, instead of having to call on the phone, um, they hit a button or we can, they go through that virtual geofence and we can see when they show up. So that's all integrated into our system that makes us work much better as a company and also provide what we consider excellent customer service. It gives us tools to give you guys a great customer experience. Now it's not perfect. There's um, mechanical issues and different kind of challenges, logistics, traffic that we have to overcome. So through that app, you can also see who's available. If someone breaks down, we can send someone over there to pick them up and try to complete that ride because these things do happen. Um, on the language services side, um, we, don't have a trans we don't have a translation app yet. Um, some of you guys may have used those before to try to translate different languages. There are so many different languages and dialects. Um, you guys know Siri? Everybody on Siri? <laughs> uh, Android users probably have something else. Um, but we have a hard time getting along, her and I, because she can't always translate my talk to text perfect. I don't have a, I don't think I don't have a big accent. Um, so there are those challenges, and we see technology moving at a rapid pace where in a medical legal setting, we don't see that taking over anytime soon. Um, when you have a doctor or an attorney or in a deposition, you don't want to wait on network issues or things like that. So we don't have an app yet. We'll keep an eye on that and see how that's going to develop. Um, but as a company, um, now that we're investing in technology, we think that we can deliver the best customer experience out there through our app and through technology. So, um, we won't take up most of my time, so I'm going to wrap it up with that. <laughs> if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to talk to you outside, and we're happy to be part of this event. Thank you very much. Thanks to uh, both of those guys. If, if anyone in here is really into technology, I want to let you know, um, August 28th at the State Board Conference here in Atlanta, um, I think from 3 o'clock to 4.30, we're going to have an hour and a half presentation on the newest technology trends. And we're going to have a lot of live demonstrations. It'll be really interesting. There's some apps out there that some of the insurance companies and TPAs are using. Uh, there's wearable technology that people are putting on to either prevent injuries or to monitor return to work situations. Um, there's just a lot of interesting things that, that uh, we'll be displaying at that, so please try to make it if you're at the State Board Conference. Again, it's the uh, Tuesday uh, event that's right before the Chairman's reception. Um, and next up is Monique Nichols, who... Uh